and welcome back. This last segment, this last video on Introduction to C, the goal is to figure out how to teach you the things that you probably will do if we didn't tell you in advance. These are the common mistakes people make when working with memory or dun 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 when memory goes bad. So this is just a review slide. Why do we do pointers at all? Well, if I'm gonna pass some value into a function, I don't wanna pass all that data. It's be a copy, because it's called by value. I wanna pass a pointer, so you can have access to my structure here, my array or my big struct or something. What are the drawbacks? You've gotta deal with these pointers. You gotta deal with the fact that when you make a malloc and free request, maybe you forget to do it, maybe you're in the wrong order, maybe you move the pointer around and you don't do it. A lot of problems. So dangly reference says, I make a pointer, I initialize a pointer, then here is when I'm gonna malloc and set it to it, but I start using it before I actually have set it to the right malloc value. Um, there's another mini error of what happens when you start reading from this uninitialized array before you even write to it, so that's an issue. Memory leak happens where you've reserved something from malloc, but then you never free it. So a tardy free says you forget to free it. You can also lose the pointer or you free it a little too late. Bad things can happen, so free at the right time. So this is the easiest case, writing off the end of an array. So here's foo, it makes 100, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll use a little picture here. So it makes a little array, I'll just write it, that's my array, isn't that pretty array? And foo points to the beginning of it, that's the zero guy there, okay? And at zero, up to, it's 100 elements, so zero up to 99. Well, what does this loop say? Zero up to and including 100. Wait, you mean you're gonna write to this 100th element? 101st element at 100, you don't have access to that. You have access to 99. So the problem is that what if you had another array? What if this, was, this were the beginning of another array this way? Well, then you have access to that data. It's some other malloc over here. It's not an error to write to that from this program. But you don't know that. So here, you know, where you're, you're setting to zero. So this had key value. You now write a zero to that. And you don't find that error until much, much later because only much later, years later, you actually visit that part and you say, well, I, certainly that's never supposed to be zero. Now it's zero because that, that simple little loop overrode it. We'll check it for you. So watch out for your limits of your array. Zero up to it, including uh, less than. So the error is obviously the equal sign here. So make that a less than and that'll work, okay? So watch out, watch your bounds. This is a great example. You cannot return a pointer into a memory stack uh, space. Here's this little guy, very simple. Here's this pointer function. It sets a little cute little y, it sets it to three, or little y, it sets it to three, and returns a pointer to it. Well, you're not supposed to do that. Why? Well, here is the pointer stack address, and here's the content. Content's gonna contain the three. Let's see, uh, hopefully, okay? So let's try it. Stack address equals pointer. While this is running, while that's running, okay, this is what the world looks like. Main has its stack frame, and pointer has its stack frame. Everything's good, and in pointer was y, because y is a temporary variable, and so that y lives right in there. Everybody's happy, everything's good, everything's there before the grasshoppers came back. Okay, you guys are fans of a bug's life. Now, when that returns, at this equal sign, this is what the world looks like. There's no more, that stack frame is gone. It didn't erase it, didn't scrub it, but it's gone, okay? Now really, there was, a, there was a three in here, still, okay? So stack address gets the address of that. I don't know what the address is, who cares? Maybe this is at a thousand, okay? So it gets the thousand. So stack address gets a thousand. So stack address points to that spot, okay? Points to that spot. So now I then say content equals star stack address. If this is what, here, remember, I'm gonna keep this guy here. That doesn't move, that's never gonna move. That points to that spot where there was a three there, okay? Now, content equals that. Follow the pointer and set it to content and print it out. Three, that's great. Wait, do it again, go grab it again. It prints garbage, wait, what, what? Yeah, you know why? Because during this printf, that's what the world looked like. Printf is a function call. Functions have to make a stack frame. Who knows what internal material, internal local variables, what what's printf needs to do? But it needs something. So it clobbered over your three that you didn't have access to in the first place. But it looked good for the first time, it printed out three. But this printf itself clobbered the three. It grabbed it, and then in the process of doing something, it actually clobbered over it. So it grabbed the three, <laughs> kind of funny. Well, I mean, this is the grab of the three. That was the find that was three. That was the fact it was three. Then printf clobbers it, puts this number there. So now that number it was a three. Now it says whatever this number is. And then next time I go grab it, I go follow that pointer, I print out garbage. 
That makes sense? So, love this demo, love this example of something that, like, how is it possible? I just follow the pointer twice in succession and it's bad the second time? Yeah, because printf clobbered it because you weren't supposed to be there in the first place. You're not supposed to use something after free. Here's, a, here's, a, here's f, which is a pointer to a struct foo. I malloc space for that, I'm all set, I, I, there, and I free it. That's great. But then the line after it, I'm gonna access the a element from that, the a field from that. You can't do that. Once you've freed f, you have no access. Now you're pointing to this guy, it's in there, but who knows if it got clobbered it there, it may work, but it may not work. Again, you don't know what's happening in that malloc space. It may give you an error, may give you a segmentation fault, it may not check it at all. All the things are, are open and you don't wanna have that happen. So don't follow, don't access. Once you've freed something, you had no access to it anymore. Really important, okay? And again, you might not find this out for, for you know, hours later, and all of a sudden, wait, why does it crash? Well, because you kind of corrupted something. You're, you grabbed it there, that's bad. Realloc can move the data. So that's another thing we talked about. Realloc can reallocate a space. So here's malloc. It makes 10 structures. So I'll here, here, and there, there's my F, and F points to that. There's my F, points to that. And look, this says struct foo star G. That's another pointer G, which points to the same thing. That's called sharing. They both own the same thing. But now, this is a nice call to realloc, okay? In the process of realloc, it might just grow it. Here's 20 now. It might just grow it. If so, then everything works. Then they both share in the space. F and G, the, the space for that, those, those structures are still there. Except, except, what if realloc didn't have room? There wasn't room here. So it'd have to, it'd have to move it. I have to pick it up and move, pick up the house and move it. Okay? So now this is 20 long. And now F is reassigned to there. But what happens? G is we call a stale pointer. G points to the old guy. And now you're gonna access G, bad. Bad, could be bad. Could be fine, could be bad, you don't know. Again, all these things are weird and don't do that. <laughs> don't free the wrong stuff. Here's a malloc for, again, the 10 structures. And now I'm gonna say F++. So here's my malloc here, guy. Here's my F, points right to the front of it. That's the zeroth element. And now F++, F now points to the first element. And now I free it, bad. Free has a list, what does free take? A, an address. So free has an address that malloc, in the process of doing malloc internally in their bookkeeping, they keep track of all the mallocs they had, which is like the pointer to the malloc returned. Return, 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 return. Free gets one and it doesn't match. I don't even know what free can do. So don't do that because who knows what free would do. Free could corrupt internal storage, could erase things. Again, it could leave it like it looks like it works, but it actually doesn't work later. All these things are really hard to track down. Don't do that. Don't double free it either. The first line is a, is a malloc, the second line is a free, and then you free it again. Free is only supposed to be done once, never twice. So that's a problem too. You don't even know what's gonna happen again. You don't know what would happen as a result of that. Here's one where you lose initial pointer. Again, a memory leak. I call void. Uh, I've got this pointer that's a global guy out here, PLK. I assign it, which is great. I can assign it uh, to malloc, that's fine. That's a total value, that's, that's valid. But now I PLK++, but I didn't know that outside of it. So I, don't, I now no longer outside have whatever PLK. I can't say free PLK anymore because I say, again, I moved it over. I didn't know that outside. I called you library, your library moved my PLK, and all of a sudden my PLK isn't pointing to the front anymore and I can't, it's not the head anymore. I can't do it. Always keep a head pointer to the front of that same idea. Don't do that. Could be a memory leak because, uh, again, we don't know what's going to happen to PLK again. Boy, I wish there were something, I wish there were something that helped me with this. There is. Valgrind is a wonderful piece of software that will check for these things. Valgrind will check for memory leaks, misuse of free, writing over the end of arrays. Valgrind is really good about looking at your static code and deciding what's it gonna do and what are some of the problems it's gonna have. Really great. It's essential for debugging C code. Please should check that out. I believe it's available in the labs. In conclusion, that's the end. C has three memory management segments to which to allocate data. Static, that's the globals, we don't worry about it. Stack, again, you don't worry about it. The operating system grows it and shrinks it automatically. The heap, again, mostly don't worry about it except for making sure when you malloc, you're always free exactly the guy you malloc. And don't forget not to do it, and don't do it twice, and don't move your pointer, all those things you can do wrong. Don't do that. <laughs> and heap problems are the biggest source of problems in C. So, good luck with your C programming. We'll see you at the next module. Take care. <laughs>